Well, hello everybody. My name is Roger and welcome to my channel, Roger's Reads. So today I'm doing another book review and the entire name of the book is entitled The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. So this is Stuart Turton's debut novel and I heard quite a bit of hype surrounding this uh, unusual story and given that I'm partial to uh, time travel, body hopping and reliving the day over and over tropes, this sounded like a tale that I'd enjoy. So this is set in the late 1920s, I do believe, and the story starts out when our narrator wakes up one morning out in the woods with no recollection of who he is or how he got there. He then witnesses what he believes is the murder of a young woman whose name he knows to be Anna, though he's not sure how he knows this bit of information. So he's nearly immobile with fear and his eyes are clamped shut with fright uh, when the so-called murderer comes up behind him, slips a compass in his pocket and tells him to go east. So he soon finds himself at the Blackheath Manor and learns that he has been invited to a masquerade ball hosted by Lord and Lady Hardcastle. He later discovers that his name is Aidan Bishop and he's trapped inside of a stranger's body. Then a figure wearing a plague doctor's mask informs him that in order to escape the manor and return to his normal life, of which he still has no memory, he must unveil the murder of Evelyn Hardcastle, which will be disguised as to not look like a murder and will occur at 11 o'clock that evening. Now the kicker here is that each time Aiden awakens, the day has been reset from the beginning and he is now in the body of someone else, uh, a different guest in the manor. And in the process, Aiden takes on the personality, mannerisms and inclinations of his current host. There is also a race against the clock in that if he fails to uncover the name of the would-be murderer within eight days or eight hosts, he will return to the first day, memory wiped clean and start the process all over again, which as we've learned, he apparently has already done numerous times. Matters become even more dire for Aiden when he realizes that he isn't the only one in a similar predicament and that there are two other people who are also caught up in this time loop. Oh, oh and there's also a knife-wielding footman who is out to kill all three of them. So on to what I liked about this story. I really loved how inventive and original the story was. Uh, it's a mind-bending, multi-layered, intricately plotted murder mystery with a huge cast of characters and a multitude of interwoven elements as we, along with the narrator, try to figure out what in the hell is going on. Now, I've always enjoyed the uh, nothing is as it seems trope and uh, that is definitely in play here. So as a reader, we constantly question what we know about the hosts and their secrets and soon discover that each character, each host is unreliable, even in fact untrustworthy. So that being said, every little snippet of conversation is important. Uh, every encounter, every detail is essential to solving the mystery. We also learn that Aiden can change the little details which will, in turn, change the outcomes as well as helping him to glean more information and bringing him closer to uh, uncovering the identity of the killer. So I enjoyed how the tension builds up right from the first page, winding tighter and tighter as the novel progresses and really does not let go until the utterly surprising ending when all is revealed and explained. The surprises come fast and furious, keeping you turning the page all the while with your heart in your throat. <laughs> At least that was my experience. And just when you think you have it figured out, the author drops yet another twisty bombshell. I also loved how nearly every person whose body our narrator inhibits is uh, despicable, scheming and untrustworthy, and how it was a struggle for Aiden to keep their unsavory personality traits and compulsions at bay. In spite of that, Aiden was able to use the physical and mental talents of each host to gather more clues and bring him closer to uh, figuring out what's going on. 
I also loved the Victorian Gothic feel to this story. Uh, it was atmospheric with haunting imagery such as the depiction of the masquerade ball, the eerie castle-like manor, the, the murderous footmen, the mysterious guests wearing plague doctor masks, and of course, murder. I also love the redemption aspect of this story, which illustrated how even the darkest of individuals can be pulled back into the light and can overcome their darkness and move toward redeeming themselves. It also showed how those who have been severely wronged can move past that thirst for revenge to forgiveness instead. So on to what I didn't like about the book. Now, for the most part, I really love this book, though I will say that it wasn't a five-star read for me. I felt that there were too many characters to keep track of, some with names that were too close in similarity, such as Donald and Daniel, and often I found myself confused in the process. It also didn't help that the story was non-linear with a really complex plot. So that being said, reading this story actually requires a fair amount of work and intense focus on the part of the reader, otherwise one risks missing crucial details and clues. So this isn't the kind of book with which you can kick up your feet and relax at the beach, but rather it's a novel that requires your full attention. I mean, there is a lot to keep track of. I also felt that the story dragged a bit in places, especially around the 75% uh, mark or so. But things really heated up the last 20% of the story as we skidded into the exciting climax where all was revealed. So, on to my verdict. I loved this fresh, intricate, and innovative story. It was like Agatha Christie meets Groundhog Day meets Quantum Leap. This was an amazing, compelling, twisty story, and I can't even begin to imagine the amount of effort and work the author put in into uh, plotting this novel. I thought that he did an amazing job of not showing his cards until the very end of the story, and that was very impressive, because very often I end up guessing the murder mystery partway through. And Mr. Turton expertly juggled the many moving parts of the book, resulting in a tightly plotted, engaging, complex story as our main character struggles through emotional, physical, and moral challenges. So this was a fast-paced, plot-driven, marvelously crafted story with rich, detailed characters and beautiful, lush prose that I am so glad that I, that I came across and ended up reading. So yeah, the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, or the seven deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, depending on where you live. So I highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, that's it for this uh, review. As always, I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you click the uh, like button below as that really helps my channel out. And if you haven't, please, please uh, consider subscribing as well and clicking the notification icon to be, renowned, to be notified of when I release new videos. And uh, that is it for this time. I will talk to you in the next video. Roger and out. Oh.